Dave, uh, yeah, it's great to see you again. First things first, uh, did they let you keep that sweet suit? Oh, man, I wish <laughs> they did. We had talked about it, but no, I didn't get to keep the sweet suit from Mrs. Davis. It's pretty crazy because we're doing a wardrobe fitting. The first one, the first thing I put on, I'm like, this seems so familiar because I love like uh, country western nudies kind of costuming, like with bedazzled stitching. And I'd worked with this guy named Jaime of North Hollywood, who used to be a tailor for nudie. And I, I was like, this is Jaime. I know this guy. I, I had him make me suits. Can If you can find him. And they found him and he made these, you know, rip away suits and all these incredible costumes. I don't know if there's a lot of people that could pull it off, but you <laughs> definitely do, man. I, I love that suit. I was like, that's a great suit. Is it like the first thing that I noticed? I mean, even when you shared the picture on Instagram, I was like, what a great suit that is. Now, the show is quite topical now that AI is really becoming like the forefront of the news. And there seems to be like two distinct camps between AI being, you know, beneficial in real life or AI ruling over all of us like it does in Mrs. Davis. And I was curious where you sort of land on that. Uh, I don't know. It's one of those things where it's, <laughs> let's see what happens, which is kind <laughs> of crazy. But, yeah, you know, there seems to be a lot of that going on in the world. So I, I try not to worry about too much of it because you can go down rabbit holes of worry in mm -hmm. general. You know, being a parent, <laughs> you, don't, yeah. you really have to kind of surrender to like, let's well, just protect it. <laughs> Please protect my kids. You know what I mean? You send that yeah. blanket thing out there. But uh, who knows? AI is really powerful in this show. It's like, a, you know, it's eliminated all the other social medias and search engines. So now it's just Mrs. Davis and she can kind of control and speak through a proxy to different people. And then Simone, uh, Betty Gilpin's character, goes on this quest to sort of uh, hopefully if she wins uh, this quest she's on she will be able to turn off mrs davis and that's the sort of thing but it all links these wild worlds with magicians rodeo right. and all these you know crazy like action and comedy and like big big set pieces so it's really a kind of a spectacle to watch right and and i feel like montgomery sort of like i mean you you're clearly playing two different versions of a character which is i mean he's got his stage persona and then you know and then you're simone's father uh as far as what i've seen so far now when you signed on to this for the stage persona aspect of it were there any particular magicians that inspired your performance yeah well i'm a big fan of david blaine and david copperfield and uh Oh, what's the Kurt Henning? Uh, not Kurt Henning. Uh, <laughs> I was like, Doug oh, Henning. Wait, what a say? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I always get magician Kurt in the Doug ring. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So I I always loved Doug Henning, especially when I was. So I thought about him a lot, but not really. I mean, it was more. I worked with a magician. I believe his name is Frankie Foti, a uh, Nashville magician, and um. And so he taught me some card tricks and I'd, you know, been a member at the Magic Castle for years and love magic. So to be able to play a magician was kind of a like childhood dream come true. Yeah, so I learned a few things, but I'm not very good. Uh, well, I mean, you know, speaking of childhood dreams, I mean, you love magicians, you love pro wrestling. I know you love clowns. Uh, you know, what is it about these sort of vaudevillian performance artists that, that you're so drawn to? I don't know. My great grandparents were in vaudeville, so it might be something about that, the traveling mm -hmm. sort of circus element. I don't know. There's something, uh, you know, in my blood that I just love that. There's something in the wrestling world. It's very kind of circusy. I don't know. I, I, I lived in Chicago uh, sort of in a few years early on. And fell in love with Bozo the Clown there and then went to the Ringling Brothers and then saw the whole circus. And it just kind of blew my mind. I was like, OK, I love this whole world. So I've always loved it. And I yeah. don't know. So, yeah. something and that I, I mean, I, I know now with you owning the rights to Bozo the Clown, I mean, clearly, like the character is very important to you and it meant a lot to you in your childhood. So, uh, you know, what are you like most interested in 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 doing to sort of revive that character? It's more like bring back a like a silliness and innocence, a fun, a joy, like the pie fights and and you know seltzer bottles, like just silly, goofy fun. 
which we just don't have enough of. It's just yeah. like the kind of stuff that's just, just laugh out loud, like, oh, not taking yourself too seriously, enjoying life, you know, having self-confidence and, you know, having good friends and, you know, standing up for yourself. Like we're teaching these little, little things, not too heavy handed, but the kids have gone through a lot and they're bombarded with these horror clowns right now. So we just want to sort of present a, a different alternative. Yeah. I, well, and that's, I, I feel like that's an uphill battle too, right? Because it's been such a, I, I mean, it's just, you get, I feel like society has been ingrained with the horror clown for like the last, like, 20 30 years or whatever and and uh and 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 I'm 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 excited to see what you do with it. I'm I'm I've, I've been paying close attention. Now, oh, thank you. I do have to say being with comicbook.com, I I have to say just how badass it is that you've written a story for heavy metal. Uh do you have any future plans for like any more like comic book sort of stories like that or any like ideas kicking around that you're working on? No, I mean, I did those with Cliff Dorfman, who's an amazing writer. And um, we did that. And we also did a D DC uh, Halloween thing where we created these band of werewolf sort of vigilantes. So it's fun. I, I've always, I loved them as a kid. I've never been really great uh, at like sticking with, <laughs> sticking with reading comics, you know, but I always loved them. So just to sort of, uh, be able to work with the artists and work with heavy metal, work with DC and Bernard Chang. And like, you know, I did a film called The Tripper where I also had a, a comic book made of it. It's been just fun with Joe Harris, another amazing comic writer. Now, are, are there any like dream comic book characters that you like would really want to play one day? Is there is there anybody out there specifically that you're like that you feel like you would be perfect for? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I would love to just sort of be in the world. I've loved the superhero comic book world for so long, uh, and also the Star Wars world. So just to be a part of them, I, yeah. I just love kind of, you know, being part of things that I loved as a kid, you yeah. know? So if you're like, well, it happened one time when I was doing a miniseries called uh, Dead Man's Walk, which was a prequel to Lonesome Dove. And I'm sitting there with Johnny Lee Miller and we're on horseback. We're just about to drive down. He goes, David, can you believe we're about to ride horses through a herd of buffalo? <laughs> so I was like, no, Johnny, I can't <laughs> believe it. He just sort of like, like got me in the moment there. Yeah. And it just was such a like beautiful thing. It's kind of like you're, I don't know. It becomes very, it feels almost like you're real and part of that world. So to be like, part of the Superman universe or part of the Batman universe yeah. or part of the, you know, uh, X-Men universe would be amazing. Oh, no doubt. I mean, I can only imagine because like I, even just being attached to like interviews like this or like junkets for things that I love, like, you know, it's like so like to feel like I in some small, tiny, minuscule way, like helped out, you know, it was it, it's it's an incredible feeling. Yeah, you totally do. It's all about the fans. That's what I love about all these different genres. It's about that love. Like the love. I mean, to me, this is what we all should be focusing on. We're so like dead set on like all of our, you know, things that we're against each other on. If we mm -hmm. could sort of start finding some of these things that we relate to. I mean, I like to say, like, if you're a parent, like the love you have for your child, you want them to be safe. You want them to live successful lives. Like most most parents feel that way mm -hmm. about their children like if we could just understand that that's everybody <laughs> you know right. what i mean that's yeah. all of us we all have that love for our kids so let's bring that love to everyone else you know just like expand our communities so we support each other it's just not enough people are talking about or doing it getting so into like animosity and you know i want to like you know stand up for these things i believe in and I do, but I also don't want to become part of the echo chamber of insults. Yeah, no, for sure. David, I know you have a lot of people to talk to today. I don't want to take up any more of your time, but I always love getting to talk to you. And our mutual friend, Brad, told me that you have some insane Bozo merch that I need you to show me one day. I want, <laughs> to, sure. I want to see. I'm so interested in that, dude. I love it. We just got the grand prize game. We're re-issuing uh, it so people can order the buckets and they have a ping pong with Bozo on them. Yeah, and that's amazing. Bozo Bop Bag is back. Awesome. Dude, thank you so much and 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 enjoy the rest of your day.